If you can appreciate a practical upgrade that makes a fast computer even faster, then this video is for you. Hello everybody, I'm Blake and I have here with me my 2011 iMac and one of Intel's latest SSDs, the 520 series, codenamed Cherryville. Now you might remember one of the videos I made last year, I put Intel's 510 series SSD into my MacBook Pro. Everything went smoothly and the performance gain was really great. It's been awesome, but I just don't use this every day. I use this every day. If you're familiar with Apple's iMac line, you know they come standard with large 7200 RPM drives. They're great from a value standpoint and they offer tons of storage, but they're not very fast. In fact, they're downright slow in an age where solid state flash based storage is becoming so commonplace. It's in our smartphones like the iPhone, our tablets like the iPad, and our thin and light ultrabook type computers like the MacBook Air. Now we're becoming spoiled by this snappy performance and I find myself more and more getting frustrated waiting for various programs and tasks on my desktop. Now this is actually a fast computer. It's got a 2.7 GHz quad core i5 processor in it and I've upgraded the memory to 16 GB. The real bottleneck is the traditional hard drive, so to speed things up I'm going to install the SSD. This is the 120 GB model and it turns out I've got a lot more data than that. So I'm going to use this as my boot drive, and that means I'll install OS X Lion and all of my programs on here, and keep the traditional hard drive in here and use it to store my personal files, the stuff that takes up so much space, like my iTunes library. Overall, I expect a nice performance gain. I'm going to get started on the install process. iFixit has a nice detailed guide for this specific project, and that's what I'm going to use. I'll provide a link in the description. They also have a $70 kit that goes along with it, but it includes some tools that I don't need. I got this special SATA power cable from eBay for $10, and these double-sided foam mounting squares for $2. I hope that's all I need. Wish me luck. While I do the install, let's take care of a couple quick orders of business. First and foremost, it's that time of year again. Everybody with taste buds can rejoice. As a special treat, I'll be giving away this year bag of zany jelly beans to one lucky winner. If you're interested, just leave a comment on this video and be sure it starts with the word Starburst. After a few weeks, I'll randomly pick a winner and notify them through YouTube personal message. Good luck to everybody! And second, if you have a Game Center account, feel free to send me a friend request. My username is Coddington. Right now, I've got 86 friends and it'd be really cool if I could make it to 100. Alright, the install's finished and it did take quite a bit longer than I hoped. I don't have any video, but I'm going to share with you several photos. This first one, the iMac just laying down on the desk with the glass front removed. Here's the screen actually out of the iMac and propped on the chair. I tried to prop it up vertically so not a whole lot of dust would land on it. Inside, just the various components of the iMac. Another angle. Here's the optical drive removed and some of the screws. You can see in this picture the optical drive is removed and the SSD is going to go in that slot, the same slot as the optical drive, just underneath it. Here's one where the logic board and the heat sinks are lifted out a bit. Different angle. Again, different angle. The SATA power cable has to go behind the logic board, and that's why you have to lift out this whole unit that includes the logic board and the heat sinks. This is where I had to lift it out and rotate a bit to get behind there. You can see kind of in the center of the screen is where I have to plug in the power, the SATA power cable. And here it is with the, the blue and red SATA power cable and the logic board is back installed in the iMac. I had quite a difficult time getting it back in there. I must have spent at least half an hour fighting with the logic board to get back in place. You can see at the bottom I had to take the memory out and that's what finally did it. I was having to fight with trying to get the memory to fit into some very tiny slots at the bottom and it just wasn't going to happen. I, I'm not sure if I missed it or if it just wasn't there, but I didn't see in, in iFixit's tutorial about um, taking out the memory. It, um, but for me it, it definitely needed to happen. So once I did that I was able to get the logic board back in place and continue. Here's the SSD hooked up to the, the SATA power cable and some of the mounting, the foam mounting is attached. And here's the SSD in the final resting place in the optical drive bay. 
uh, attached to the back. There it is again. And this is the last picture just showing that it booted up, thankfully, no, no issues. Next I'll install OS X line and we'll see how long it takes. I already partitioned the SSD and I made sure to select the GUID partition table. This will be a fresh install, not an upgrade or a time machine restore. And since Lion doesn't come on a disc and I didn't buy the official Apple flash drive version of Lion, the install source is going to be my trusty super talent flash drive. And I'm going to use my iPhone as a stopwatch. And here we go. Okay, the installation is complete and as you can see it took just over 9 minutes. Again, that's a full install of Mac OS X Lion. During that time, it also had to download some updates from Apple server, so I think 9 minutes is definitely very respectable. It's at the welcome screen right now, so I'm going to continue with the setup and we'll be doing some benchmarking in just a bit. The first benchmark I'm going to do is a Blackmagic disk speed test. You can see I'm using the 5 gigabyte stress setting. And here we go. The write speed will be about 150 megabytes per second. And the read speed pretty much maxes out the meter at almost 450 megabytes per second. For comparison, this is the same test performed on the traditional hard drive and you can see much slower. Usually only performed around 80 megabytes per second read and write. Also for comparison, here's how the 510 series performed on the same test in my MacBook Pro. You can see markedly slower read and write times compared to the 520 series, but it's still ahead of the traditional hard drive. The next benchmark is NovaBench, and you can see the drive write speed is rated at 320 megabytes per second. Not sure why the drive write speed is rated over 100 megabytes per second less than some of the other tests, but nonetheless, still a lot faster than 81 megabytes per second that this machine scored on the NovaBench test when I first got it. And I wanted to quickly review these screenshots I took from Crystal Diskmark. This is a Windows benchmarking program that I used. I did install this drive in my Windows laptop first just to test this out and see what kind of results I would get. You can see I did perform four different tests. Two on this screen. Pay attention in the red circle you can see the differences. Two on this screen and two on this screen. Pretty similar numbers. The sequential reads are way up there, 450, 460, 70. Um, pretty, pretty impressive numbers, I think, all around. And for the last demonstration, I'm just going to open several common apps so you can hopefully get a feel for some of the snappy performance. Here's the App Store, Safari, Photoshop, Dreamweaver, InDesign, iTunes, Here's Google Chrome with 20 tabs of common websites. So as you can see, uh, very responsive opening all programs. That's all the demonstration I have for you. I did want to make a quick comment about my choice of this Intel SSD. This is my third Intel SSD. I have the 510 series and also the X25M SSD. Uh, I'm very happy with each of these drives. No problems to report. Intel seems to have a reputation for making great SSDs and I can see why. This isn't to say other manufacturers don't have comparable products, but I just don't have any experience to comment on. So I encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, my name is Blake and thanks for watching.